Hello and welcome to another episode of the News Review on Unilad TV. I am Vina Peters. Nollywood, the Nigerian film industry, has experienced a remarkable evolution in recent years with one significant contributor being its integration into pay TV platforms. Now, this transition has not only expanded the global reach of Nollywood, but it has also brought about numerous benefits for the industry and its stakeholders. In recent times, the federal government, in collaboration with the African Development Bank, AFDB, has concluded plans to roll out our $617 million IDICE fund for the digital technology and creative industry. The hint was given by the Minister of Arts, Culture and Creative Economy, Hanatu Musawa, at a high-level meeting with the Director General of the AFDB, Latin Barrow, on Thursday, February 1, 2024, in Abuja, where she highlighted the huge potential of the creative economy to generate employment opportunities for millions of young Nigerians. While the integration of the Nollywood into pay TV platforms has undoubtedly brought about several benefits, it is essential to explore the potential negative aspects and challenges associated with this uh, transition, from economic consideration to content quality concerns and the likes. And to do this with me, I have in the studio Dr. Shuaibu Husseini, the Director General of the National Films and Census Board. Welcome to the program, Doctor. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, let me congratulate, officially okay. congratulate you on your new position. Thank you so much. All right, so before I actually um, dive into my questions, I would like to pick your brains on what you think about Nollywood on pay TV. Oh, well, um, thank you for having me, and it's a pleasure to be here. I mean, here is home for me. Um, to your question, Nollywood on pay TV. Well, it's an, a very important advancement. Um, this is, of course, you know, pay TV is one of the distribution outlets for our films. So we started with direct to video, which is almost like an anomaly internationally, because once you do your creative work, the right route to go is to go through the cinemas, which we call theoretical distribution, and then you begin to explore others. But we started from direct to video until now when we, with, with new media, we are now, you know, everybody's going to pay TV. Pay TV is good. I mean, it has, it has helped Nollywood to go very far because you know this is a medium that is viewed in different parts of the world, you know, you don't have to be in a particular place or you don't have to go and put it. All just you need to do is to be a subscriber to a network and then be able to access as many films as you want to, as, as you're able to access or as they have on the platform. So it's a very important development. It signa signals an advancement, you know, for the industry, especially in the area of distribution which has mm. been a major problem for the industry because our films don't get to be seen beyond, you know, the traditional markets in Pound Street, Aba, in um, Iweka Road, and then in, um, in, in the north, you know. But now there's access for, for our films. People just need to subscribe to those networks and then they'll be able to see Nollywood content. It has helped a lot in distributing our content, our content, not just in the country, but uh, uh, in other parts of the world. I mean, not too long ago, we heard how uh, over 7 million people watched um, um, the Black Book. Black Book. Okay. They watched okay. 7 million people watch, uh, 17 million actually watch Black Book. Oh. You know, that can only be possible through this means and not in any other means. And it was watched in countries like Singapore, oh. in Japan and the rest of them. So you find out that it has helped a lot in distributing Nollywood content. Okay, now I see that um, for in, for people that are actually doing all this, because right now we have too many TVs right mm, now. Mm. And um, for me, that is a huge concern mm. in terms of um, quality standard. Mm. So how do you think... Um, we can actually checkmate that or how do you think um nollywood production showcased on pay tv mm. can actually implement um high quality standards i think i think the, the one of the challenges and um, maybe we'll talk about that later is this issue of piracy mm. 
Mm. But outside piracy, I think one of the things that these pay TV channels have contributed and even the streaming platforms have also contributed is that now we see, you know, some improvement in the quality of offerings that get on this pay TV. Because this is a TV that is based, this is a service that is based on subscription. Yes. You don't want to subscribe to a service where they have poor quality content on them. So what you now find is that they set some standards. I'm not saying that all of them have some standards, but majority of them have what they call QC, quality control measures, mm -hmm. to ensure that only quality content get there. But of course, you know that in an industry, you don't just have to have, you don't, not every of the content you find that are quality. There are some that are done at low end, mm -hmm. low budget ends and the rest of them. And there are some people who want to see those kind of films. So as a, as a content acquisition, acquisition out, uh, outlet, all you just need to do is also have a balance of them, but you prime on quality content because once it, once you don't have quality content on your platform, people will move to another Global. platform. It's as easy as that. So I think they put down measures, but it's just that these days because of, um, you know, the multiplicity of these mediums, mm. a lot of people will live where they are supposed to go, where there are quality control measures and just go to channels where they can just, you know, with due respect to, I mean, those who operate, you know, the YouTube channels and the rest of them, okay. you know, that one, you know, you self upload, you just go there, upload your content and the people are struggling there. They don't even want to know the quality. Sometimes there are some content that I watch there and I'm wondering, how did they get there? But you know, if yeah. you're in business of content, you know that everybody will be looking for quality on your content. So you put down some measures to make sure that, you know, only the right content get there. I agree totally that there are some of those platforms where you go, you watch some content and you are wondering, what's this? Why are they here? But you know, again, they're in business. The more content they have, the more people get there. I have heard overhead people saying, ah, this channel, they have so many content too. You know, sometimes some people don't even care about the quality again. Now they care even more about, about the number of films that they can watch at the cost that they are paying to watch the films, you know. But there are also some people, like people like us, who look out for quality content to watch. I can't stand the film that that doesn't dot, I mean, cross all the boxes as far as quality is concerned. I can't mm. stand it. If the story is not correct, if the production values are not correct, I just do something else. I don't want to torture myself, you know, so I just do something else. So these channels, they set up those standards, but sometimes to bend the rules mm. to be able to allow more content on their platforms. Okay. Um, and these um, platforms, um, they are mostly used with data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, for some people who cannot afford to use their data mm. to actually subscribe on such on all these paid TVs mm. when they could just you know just go get a CD and just watch it one time mm. or probably rewatch it as they like. Mm. So where is the balance? Oh well, you know the the thing is that you choose what you want to do. I mean, nobody has stopped you from going to buy the CDs. You can mm. still go to the market, although now it is not too popular, you know. Exactly. Don't also forget that, you know, the, apart from data, for you to watch those CDs, you need power. Mm. And, you know, power is a challenge. The amount of money you use to buy maybe a, a petrol to mm -hmm. watch one CD, you know, will be almost the cost of subscribing for a month. Mm. You know, for network. I mean, now you could subscribe for as little as three thousand era yeah. for certain GBs, and then uh, and then you know what you watch. You know how to control. I know some of my friends who don't put on their data at all. You know, and then it is only when they want to watch or they want to assess their messages that they put on. Mm. So they know how to manage it and the rest. There's a balance. You know, mm. the thing about the entertainment is that you choose which one you know you can afford. And they have them. I mean, even the pay TV, there are uh, uh, um, there are packages for those who are not in the middle class or upper yeah, class. True. There are packages. You go for that one. So if you feel that you cannot pay for data, you can't get data to watch hmm. on the streaming platforms or on another platform. All you just need to do is just go and get a DVD and then you'll be watching as you, as you want. Hmm. But the only problem with the DVD is that, you know, you'll be stocking tapes. 
Yes. And there are no space now in your house for yourself. You are talking about stocking tape. I mean, I used to stock a lot of tapes, you know, in my house. And now I, I don't <laughs> see the need for them because the same film I want to see and waste my time to get and then slot mm. in is the same film I just put on a smart TV and then just go to one streaming platform and I'm watching it. I can watch it over and over again. In fact, now the streaming platform do it in such a way that you can even download the films and watch yeah, for some sure. time, you know, and all that. So there's the issue of balance doesn't come in here. The thing is that mm. choose the medium that serves you best, you know, and then hook on to that, you know. I like the idea of streaming. I like all that idea. It makes content easier for you to access, but it's quite expensive for a developing economy like ours how many people can afford it and that's why again you see that a lot of people are doing the sharing method you know which is why even the streaming platforms are complaining because the market is not expanding you know you buy one you sus one i subscribe mm. and then i give uh, access to four members of my family <laughs> <laughs> you know to watch they are complaining bitterly in mm. terms of the subscribe uh, just their subscribers base you know they are complaining a lot mm. you know that people are not adding to the number people are just sharing they're sharing yeah they are sharing a lot in fact it's so much of sharing and then now again they are faced with the issue of uh, piracy mm. because you see a film on the streaming platform and you think that they have done everything possible to make sure that nobody accesses the content but it, two days give just two days and you see the content flying everywhere. I think that's a challenge that they are trying to fix and I hope that they'll be able to fix it. But it's just that an average person mm -hmm. who cannot afford those services, even if you s tell him on the street that this is a film, I don't want to mention the name, but this is a film titled I Am Here mm -hmm. and it is sold for 100 naira. He will rush for it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But what you try and do is that leave those kind of content and concentrate on watching quality content on any platform. If you don't watch them on DVD, then you go and watch them on YouTube or you go and watch them on the pay TV yeah. or you go and check out for it on the streaming platforms that are available. Okay, let's talk about piracy. Mm. Um, as your office is concerned, mm. is there something that um, you think you would like to do as it concerns piracy or Will it just continue to run as it has always been? Oh, well, there's... ...for... ...commission. We can only provide support to them. Okay. We can only provide because we need content to be able to be seen and not... Uh, so that the content can bring monies back. Mm. to the producers so that they can make more content and bring to us to classify, you know, and, and the cycle goes on and on. I will not be happy to hear that somebody was supposed to make a f move money from his movies, mm. that movie is pirated. Like when I heard that Tony Abraham's film yes. was pirated, when I heard that even the tribe of Judah, even was though that, he made so yes. much money it at was. the cinema, comparatively, that it was pirated. We feel so... I, f I feel so sad about it. It's not something that should really happen. Usually, you know, in this, in other parts of the world, it takes a lot of time before you begin to hear that this film has been broken down to a level where people can watch mm. them. But here in Nigeria, just give 48 hours and then it's mm. all. But I like what they have done immediately and we are supporting that effort. Okay. Some people have been apprehended and the matter is in court. We are going to support the prosecution of that so that it can serve as a deterrent to people. Intellectual property is like it's like you are stealing somebody's brain, actually. Somebody puts a work together from beginning to the end and wants to make money from it, and you go on. You are robbing the person of yeah. investment, of so much money. So we are going to support that effort, and we are going to do a lot of public enlightenment. I mean, like some seven years ago, there was going to be Oscars, and... You know, I ran, I ran into a guy selling these CDs and he told me that these are all the films, nominated films for mm. Oscars. And I bought hey, it cool. and I went home, took my bath, sat down, prepared to watch the stuff. And they were all trailers hmm. in the film. There was no <laughs> film. So they dealt with me there. So what it means is that, you know, we need to carry out a lot of media literacy program, and that's mm. what we do a lot at the census board. We need to carry out a lot of media literacy programs where we educate people on how not to patronize those kind of stuff. Okay. In South Africa, you can't 
except you go to districts where there are bootleggers. In South Africa, you can't buy CDs on the street. Mm. You can't buy. You go to a media mart. You go to a shop. Like our bookshop now, we have a section where they sell films, CDs, and all that. You go there and buy from there. And then it's document where documented. They know that you have bought. And then revenue streams begin. Mm. You begin to tell that, oh, you have sold one copy. The filmmaker or the the, the music producer gets an alert that you have bought the, the CD from that shop. But here, everywhere. In fact, sometimes you are passing on the street, you see them shouting, one, one, naira, one, one. Naira. Mm -hmm. Somebody's intellectual property. You are selling on the street and ringing bell for people to come and buy. Mm -hmm. It's even, it's even, it's even better with, with films. What are books? Go and see what they are doing to books. You know, authors will sit down overnight, write books, and then somebody will just go and mass produce it mm -hmm. and then be selling them in the market. So we are really going to wage a war. And one of my appeal, in fact, now that I'm around, we are going to push that legislation, is to make piracy a criminal offense. Oh. Presently, it is not. Presently, you go to court, you prosecute someone, they give him six months imprisonment or pays an option of fine. I was in court as a journalist like, some 10 years ago. A guy was apprehended. They asked him to go to jail for six, three months. They gave him an option of fine of 100,000 naira. He paid hmm. and walked away. That's not that's not right. But if you make it a criminal offense and you put somebody behind the bars for a long time without any option of fine, mm. in fact, the person will think twice. But you put him there for three months, sometimes they won't even pay. They'll say, ah, is it three months? Their sponsors will tell them, just go and spend three months in the prison and they will take care of them there. They'll come out and they'll still do the same thing. Because those guys who sell on the street are not the real pirates. They are just hawking for those guys. The main pirates are not on the streets. They are somewhere in a rented apartment with equipment, mass producing people's works and selling. It's robbery. It's not a thing that we should treat with kid gloves. We should make it a criminal offense. In fact, for me, if I was at the Copyright Commission, I would even ban the sale of intellectual property on our streets. People should not be selling books on this, on, in traffic. People should not be selling CDs. In it's like you are selling drug in traffic. But here, we, they sell everything. I even see people selling cutlass on the traffic. Something that is a weapon. You will see them. <laughs> I see people selling pressing iron in traffic. <laughs> and I tell my students, you know, that I teach consumer affairs, that look, some of these things, you buy them and then you don't have a place where you can go and complain later hmm. about them. You know, somebody had even bought a phone in traffic. Wow. I only found out that there was some stuff inside the phone. The phone worked for that bit, but by the time I just said, the, the lady told the guy, put it in the park. As he took it back to put it in the park, he exchanged it for something mm. else. You know, so we must check some of those things. So we are going to support the Nigerian Copyright Commission to fight piracy. It's, it's something that we must eliminate so that people who create works can enjoy the fruit of their their labor. Can you imagine how long it took to produce a tribe of Judah, to produce Malaika, to produce uh, Ada Omodadi? Uh, how much money went into it? How much money people are waiting to make out of it? And then all of a sudden, it's everywhere. So we must try and protect intellectual property if we have to move forward as a creative industry. Okay, that's that's really, really, really enlightening and uh, uh Moving on, moving on. Let's look at um, long-term and sustainability of um, these paid TVs. Now, what strategic measures can be put in place to ensure that um, long-term sustainability of Nollywood on paid TV, um, that is the era of paid TV mm. now, considering um, both economic factors and the preservation of um, the industry's unique culture identity? Okay. I think what we can do, actually, is to is to make content that reflect who we are as a people. And it is the volume of content that we make in those areas mm. that we make the, the pay TV channels to not to have any other option than to begin to dictate content to us. I think what is happening now that I understand is that most of the time when they go to them to commission works, they detect to them the kind of content they want to see because they, they, they easily tell them that this is what the audience want to see. Mm. But you know, 
this audience that you find are more of captive audience. They are audience that are in their homes. It's the content that you serve them and that relates to them, that meets their expectation that they watch, contents that they find engaging. So we as content producers must begin to do more produce, the more content we produce, the less influence the pay TVs we have on us in terms of the outlook of our content. Mm. So if we want to continue, if we want to make films that are relevant to us in terms of our, our sociocultural build-up, what I think we must do is that our writers, our producers must continue to make those kind of content that we sit well with our audience, that the audience will find engaging, and that way the pay TV channel will have no option than yeah. to acquire those contents. But when we don't produce, then they will begin to tell us what to produce. And where the problem is, is when they, they begin to tell you what to produce. What to produce. Because presently, I've heard some people complaining that they are pushing some kind of ideology, pushing some kind of, you know, oh. content, some kind of things that would even our society don't allow into. But they can push that because we don't have a pushback. Mm. If, we, if we make those contents, that they don't need to dictate to us how to make those contents. We'll find out that we'll have taken care of all that. So we are going to encourage our filmmakers to continue to make films, not to pander so much to them in terms of what they want to, us to do in terms of content. I've heard some people complaining, oh, they are making us to embrace Western values and all that. But you are the one producing, mm. you are the one making the content. Why don't you provide scripts that we celebrate our values, that we celebrate our culture. When you do more of that, if they say they cannot do it, produce it, and then you hand it over to them, they will acquire. It's not all that should be commissioned. There are some that needs just acquisition. And if you don't all have to take your films to pay TV. There are other platforms that you can use to sell your content. I mean, in Black Book, for instance, they didn't go to the cinema. They chose to make their film and then it was acquired somehow by one pay TV channel and it's successful. There are some people who have not even gone to those pay TV channels and they have made so much money from, I mean, there's a film called Nkoli, uh, uh, Nkoli Wansuka or something. That film has reportedly sold over uh, 1 million copies, oh. CDs. They didn't go to streaming platform. They just produce the content that, you know, that the people in the southeast could relate with and it's selling like pure water even me that i'm sitting down just to understand why people are buying the films <laughs> i bought like episode one to ten of the film and i understand that it's up to 20 episodes wow. and people are buying the guy has built hotels he has mm. made so much money from it so you choose where to take your content to nobody's forcing you to go there because sometimes i hear that oh that's where the money is they are going to give you plenty money and the rest but would they give you plenty money and and you begin to uh, make movies that do not, you know, that abuse sense, our cultural and, and social sensibilities. No, you must not help them to do that. So we need to produce more content, more content in such a way that it will be, diff it will be even difficult for them to acquire those contents. Oh. They'll begin to complain that, oh, your content are too many. Let's get to that level. And then another thing that we must do, we must begin to build local platforms. Oh local platforms, those ones owned by Nigerians, those ones owned by Africans. Because I don't see any Nigerian who has a platform that you bring a film to and he will tell you, you go and put, there must be two people in the film who, are, who have an idea mm. of um, what our country says it have been outlawed. I don't want to use my mouth to mention that on public TV. You know, there must be, you must teach your young ones that there is no problem in a boy and a girl kissing, yeah. as we see now in some of our films. And when my son tells me that, I say, there's a problem. Don't do it. Don't do it. In fact, now we even, we even lock those channels up for them. Because even now, cartoons, in cartoons, yes. in, in animal mm. uh, cartoons, you still find a, 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 a same-sex relationship, you know, something I don't want to mention, mention it. <laughs> you know, you still find them in those, you still find them in those contents, yeah. you know. So we must produce mm. more content that we tell them that, no, this is not we as a people, this is what we are as a people. Okay. Um, what are the primary challenges um, Nollywood faces in navigating the global pay TV stage? I know that um, we've talked about um, piracy mm. and um, there is um, competition. Mm. But aside from those, what other challenges can you say 
than Nollywood faces. We try to meet meet up with their standards. I've, I mean, if you check those platforms, you find out that the number of Nigerian films on those platforms, you do not just equal the production potential of the industry. Mm -hmm. The industry makes a lot of film. I only got to the censors board to know that we censor almost about 250 films, average of 1,000 films in two months. That's a lot. So if we do 1,000 films in two months, then it means that in a year, we do close to 10,000 or so in a year. So if we do 10,000 in a year, and we have started doing videos as far back as the 90s, you know the number of films we have done by now. So we have the content, we have the content, but the challenges is that, look, you need to meet the standards of this. We are going global now. Our audience are not just Nigerians. Our audience sure. are beyond Nigeria. They need to understand some of the things that we do. We need to improve in our content, in our subtitling. Mm -hmm. We need to improve in the, in the technical areas. The people who watched Black Book in Hong Kong may not even understand Black Book in mm. terms of if they want to follow the language and the rest. But subtitling worked. And then some of the actions they were able to tell, you know, because it's, it's a thriller, you know, they were able to see those fight scenes, all those on the, on the, on the ground stuff that were done in the film and all, they were able to relate to their own society. So we must improve in our content. So one of the challenges they face navigating them is because some of them have not been able to meet the QCs, the quality control measures that these pay TVs have put. Mm. That's one. Then secondly, there's the issue of funding. You need funding to be able to meet so those. I was actually going to talk about funding. Yeah, they need funding. You know, up to now, you know, there are only very few people who spend so much money, who mm. put, who get so much money to put in films and the rest. And then most of the time, we depend on these pay TV and streaming platforms for the kind of budget that we need to make those kind of quality films. So we need fundings. You know, in other, in other developed or developing societies, they have something they call conditional and non-conditional grants. But here, we expect these filmmakers to go and get loans, and these loans don't come cheap. These loans, sometimes they are double-digit loans. They, you don't, you pay back, you pay back with your head and leg, you know, especially if the movie does not make any sale. But thankfully now, we have, is, I mean, in your intro, you mentioned the IDs fund. Thankfully now, we got a minister, uh, Hanatu Musawa, who is able to say, look, we can use our IP as collateral. A Tunde Kelani, for instance, what kind of collateral do you want from a Tunde Kelani who has made over 12 highly successful films? Those could be the collateral. A, a Mo Abudu, what collateral do you want from her when she has done some successful films? Kunle Afolayon, she could use her IP as collateral. Oh. Are you telling me that if a, a Chino Achebe was, was still around, for instance, you are going to ask him to bring collateral oh. when he has written very successful books? His books could stand as collateral for him. So we want a situation where we don't need to, we don't need to go and Give, give up our houses mm. because we want to take loan to produce entertainment content. We want a situation where we'll be able to assess funding to do films. And then government needs to give, make provisions, not just government. We need to have foundations, you know. Mm. It's only recently that I see a lot of foundations coming up in the country. But most of them are more of humanitarian, you know, services and all that. But we need foundations to come into the development of the creative industry it is very, very important because you see, when in the time, in this time and age, especially in this time of, uh, of, of um, you know, we're trying to work on the economy of the country, people need entertainment. Exactly. People need something to relax. People need something to break them out of worries and all that. And the only thing that you can use is entertainment. I tell people that if you watch a Nollywood film or if you just watch a film a day, it will keep stress away. Mm -hmm. I do it a lot. Anytime I'm very stressed, I just put on a film and I watch. It could be a gospel film, do anything, but I just put on a film yeah, that has beginning and end and that has characters that will engage me. I just watch it and you find out that I'll be okay with myself and I'll move on. You know, so we need funding. We need infrastructure too. Okay. There's a problem of infrastructure. You know, I used to tell my students that it's only in Hollywood films that I will see that some in some Hollywood film, let me not be 
general. general. Yeah. So it's only an Hollywood film that I will see that an actress, a leading actress, is going to travel from Lagos to the to the east. And then she goes to the bus stop. And then people are gathered and they are watching at her like this. So I usually ask my students, so when you travel, do you see people standing and watching you? And that's because the filmmakers don't have control over their production yeah, environment. areas, the environment, you know. Like you want to shoot in Unilag. You don't necessarily have to come to Unilag. You can create that area of Unilag that you want to reflect on a production lot, mm. you know. You don't have to bother. You see our music videos. You see how it has improved. Yeah. Because a lot of them use sets. Yeah. They use production sets. But this is what is lacking in the industry. The industry is over, over. I mean, the video part of the industry is over 30 years old. And we don't have a single production lot where people can go and do. The, the U.S. we see, the 45th Street that we see in some films mm -hmm. are, cre are created. Hmm. They are created. All those places where you see people running and cars are screeching, cars are hitting, they are created. Those are sets. If you go to uh, Bombay, you know, where they make Bollywood films, you find out that they create areas. If they want to create um, um, Oshodi for you, they will create neatly there. They will create and do all those things. So we need production facilities for them. We need facilities for them to edit, do proper edit. Up to now, you find out that it's only productions that can afford it, they take their productions abroad to go and do post-production, like sound, we still have gap there, mm. like editing, you know, proper post-editing, we still have some gap there. So we need those infrastructure, we need those funding, and, you know, just make sure that we have a conducive environment for them to practice. And we, at the Census Board, we'll do our best to ensure that whatever we can provide for those who are our direct stakeholders, like mm. exhibitors, distributors and content producers, we do our best to ensure that we provide the enabling environment for them to be able to do their jobs. Okay, because um, our time is actually fast spent, mm. so let's quickly move on to um, job um, opportunities for filmmakers. Mm. Yeah, so um, now the integration of Nollywood to, into pay TV, mm. um, how has it contributed to the creation of new jobs, mm. opportunities for filmmakers? Now, we are including directors, producers, mm. and of course, scriptwriters. They make, they make films. When you do, the more you produce, the more jobs you create for people. Okay. And you know when they produce and they 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 they, they give the, they they are acquired by this pay TV. Mm -hmm. They know that at least the next job they are going to commission them to do another job. The thing about Nollywood is that the more productions you do, the more jobs you create for people. Mm. You know, there's even a time when there's even a time when you begin to look for production hands, and they will tell you that they are tied on two or three jobs. projects and the rest. There was a time in Hollywood where a filmmaker would be on three sets hmm. at the same time, you know. So with this integration, of course, there will be jobs for people because the more jobs that are done, the more employment, the, not just for the actors, for the directors, yeah. for the writers, also for those who provide some other services like catering services, yeah. like um, costume, design, costume yes. design, like um, production management, you know, and all that. Drivers, location, mm. scouters, and all that. Even the community where they, they, they film, you know, have some things that they will get. Like some people will sell some stuff. They will have people buying those stuff around them. So its potential for job creation is very high. Very, very, very high because the more productions people do, the more people get engaged. Mm. You know, we've not even, we've not even, we'll not even be able to, to engage as much people as we should engage, you know. So if we are going to have like a hundred productions running at the same time, you know what it will take. An average production takes almost like, even for the smallest of films, take almost like 20 people. Mm. An average production, I'm saying. But there are some productions like all of Kunle Afolayan's production. There's none that he has done that has been less than a hundred people. Mm -hmm. So if Kunle does five films, if Kunle will do one film, Itunde Kalani does, Imo Abudu will do, and 20 others. Mm -hmm. And they are going to have less than hundred people. Mm -hmm. Do the maths. See how we do, uh, see how we provide jobs. Mm -hmm. So we should look at this industry. It's an industry that can create even more jobs than any other. I think the only industry that that we compete with this will be agriculture. 
Okay. And then maybe oil because everybody is doing our business now. <laughs> everybody <laughs> is doing our business. Let's quickly look at um, balancing creativity and um, employment stability. Mm. Now, how is the industry actually striking a balance between fostering creativity mm. and providing stable employment opportunities for professionals across various um, domains within Nollywood? Okay, you know, I like this part of the question that you asked because that's even one of the things that we are encouraging in the industry. We are encouraging the development of the other value chain. Okay. The attention is just on acting, acting those people in front and behind the camera. Mm. But we're not thinking about the other aspects of it, like somebody should run a, a full-fledged production company mm. with lawyers, with accountants, with everybody working for them. You know, some people taking care of the business side. Mm. But you find that here in the industry, it is the producer who is the uh, business manager who, after finishing, takes his production to go, and look for, to go and look for where to distribute it and oh. the rest. So what we need to do, those jobs that you're mentioning now are those ones that are jobs that are for people. You, you are sure that these people will work from January to December because production must go on. But people like actors are people you engage for that production. Nobody is paid to be an actor in a production company. You can be mm. put in a pool and you be they'll be calling you from time to time as a job as a job demands. But for this other aspect of the value chain, you need people to be engaged. You need accountants, you need um, lawyers. Uh, lawyers, you need auditors and so on. So you need to develop those other areas. We need to develop those areas if we want to create more jobs and if we want jobs that are sustainable, jobs that, you know, you can actually get people to know that, look, you have raised, we have those kind of things. And that's what I did actually in trying to study the structure of the Nollywood industry in my, in my, in my, in my PhD. I wanted to find out whether it is possible for us to begin to talk about studios you know, than just bag handbag companies. Mm. Because they will just tell you I'm, I'm a, 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 a Productions. But that's where it ends in his briefcase. Mm. There is no office. There is nowhere. He doesn't have an accountant. He doesn't have anybody working for him. He's everything mm. to him. But we need to develop those other areas and not just leave it to just um, one person running a business that is supposed to be run by maybe 20, 20 other people. You should create employment for those 20 people. And those people are the kind of jobs that they will do over the years. So some of those jobs are not ad hoc. You can't get an accountant for to provide ad hoc service. It yeah. should be one that should continue with you, you know. Oh. Our time is actually for spent. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's been a pleasure having you on the, the pleasure program. pleasure is mine. The pleasure is mine. Yeah, and I actually hope you actually come back in when we do call on you. Anytime, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's our program for today. We have been speaking with uh, Dr. Shaibu Husseini, the Director General of the National Films and Census Board. And that's it on our program. Many thanks for staying tuned. I am Vina Peters. Have a nice day. <laughs>